Hey everybody, Rowan Smith here of Mountain Bushcrafters Alliance, of course. This is going to be a fur tanning video, so if you're not into that, if that's not your thing, scroll on by. But if you are interested in tanning furs, stick around, because you may have some ideas and some tips that you could help me with to better handle fur. Stay with me. Now, before I get into this video, let me start by saying I'm not a professional fur handler. I don't claim to be. I'm not a professional trapper. <laughs> I'm just a make-do until the real fella shows up. But uh, in order to sell to a fur handler or a fur buyer, uh, you have to about be a professional trapper. And I am not a professional trapper. <laughs> Trust me. You can go through my videos and see that. It's pretty evident. But uh, I catch just enough fur to make a few items for my personal use. Now, I will sell uh, things to personal friends or people that maybe want a wall hanger or some mitts or a hat, earmuffs or something to supplement my income to be out there. But by no means am I a professional. I'm not trying to portray myself as being a professional fur handler. Now, if you're going to brain tan, you'll just need the brains and some warm water. You'll need to mince them. You'll need to make it like a real soupy paste. Today, I'm going to bottle tan. And what you'll need is you'll need a prepared hide, which we have here bobcat that I caught this year uh, and the reason I'm kind of in a hurry let me add this the reason I'm kind of in a hurry to tan these hides the dermisted beetle <laughs> I'm telling you the Cleopatra beetle will absolutely eat your raw hides up I lost about nine or ten furs year before last to the beetle They'll get in that hide, they'll eat that hide, they'll lay their eggs, their eggs look like little hairs, little fine, look like fuzz, and they will devour that hide, destroy that hide. I had to fumigate my fur shed. <clears throat> I had to throw away a bunch of beautiful coyote and bob hides. About make you sick to your stomach. If you bottle tan, chances are you'll never see the dermistead beetle. Changes are. I'm not saying that's a that's a deterrent, but they don't like the bottle tan. They don't like the tanning oil solution. They want raw furs. And if you have raw furs, my advice to you, if they're prepared and ready to be tanned, get on it. Uh, I was talking to Muskrat Outdoors, uh, and. Uh, a guy had actually lost his taxidermy business due, due to the dermisted beetle. They will devour your hides. Now, let's let's get into this. And like I said before, if you've got any ideas, any uh, tricks, anything that you could share, pass along to me, constructive criticism. I've been called a lot of names, so I don't need that, of course. But if you've got any constructive criticism, you can pass along to me. As far as tanning hides... Maybe I'm putting too much tan on them. Maybe I'm not putting enough tan on them. People around here don't do this where I live. And everything that I've learned, I've learned through destroying a lot of hides. I've learned through YouTube and learned through friends on the internet. So uh, let's get right into tanning this. You'll need uh, gloves, brush, and of course tan. I want to show you something right real quick before I get into all this. This is a skunk that I caught last year. Uh, smells like a brand new saddle. That's what it smells like. It don't, it don't have no skunk smell. There's no odor to this whatsoever other than leather. That's what it smells like. This is a bobcat that I caught, I think, year before last. It's already tanned. I may have or may not have put enough tanning solution on it. Still a little brittle. 
you got to be careful when it's at this stage. You start tugging and pulling, you're going to tire it. There's the proof. <laughs> it is what it is. I've got a whole bag of tanned furs over here in the corner ready to be worked up. I'm running way, way behind. Let me show you the difference in the hides, though. This is the bobcat that I caught this year. Soft as it can be. Had a friend that wanted a, a bobcat uh, to put on the coffee table. His man cave. Wanted the head and all, but due to obvious reasons, <laughs> I didn't save the from the eyes down. I saved from the eyebrows back. You want to make sure you get all of the cartilage out of the ears because it will set up rot let me show you something right here there's the difference tanned not tanned get rid of that let's see if we can find us a spot here see right here see how it turned white see how it turned white and just as soft as it can be. Now, if you pull on this, babysit your furs. Okay, once you flesh them, start drying them. If you pull on this, see right there, soft as it can be. If you pull on this and it springs back rubbery, it's not dry enough. See how it's turned white? Breaking them fibers in that fur. See that? Working it back and forth. Different angles. You don't have to fight it like you're fighting the fire if you babysit it. Now, if you let it dry too long, if you leave a lot of the membrane, you're going to pull that sucker. What they do is they'll wrap it against itself, put it around a pole, work it back and forth. This is a sorry man's way of doing it. Time consuming because you have to babysit it. See how it's turned white? But it is what it is. There are some places that are a little too dry if you let it sit too long and get real brittle, you can spritz it with water. Let it sit just a minute or two. Don't soak it. Just spritz it. Let it sit just a little bit. That water will soak into that hide. And you can begin to work it, begin to pull it. You don't want to, when it's at this stage, you don't want to yank and pull and tug. You'll get a tore hide I'll have to repair that hide if I sell it depends on what I use it for work it work it work it that's the name of the game I ain't losing no hair I've got a curling brush you don't want to go hard into it what I like to do a lot of people do things a little different that's fine and dandy I'm not saying my way is the right way I'm not saying your way is the wrong way but what I like to do is I like to put the tan on it, let the tan get in it, sit for a while, and take a curling brush and lightly go over. I don't go in into that fur brushing it hard. There's no sense in it unless you've got a lot of knots. A lot of people even wash their furs in a washing machine. That's fine and dandy before you go through this process. But uh, uh, that under, that under hair, that undercoat, that undercoat you will pull that out if you if you're if you tug and pull and brush and brush and brush and brush and brush you have bald spots in your fur now like I said if it depends on what you're using it for if you've already got an idea of what you want that that uh, fur to be what you're working up 
that's uh, fine and dandy if you're not going to use the complete fur. Just keep pulling and tugging. Look how soft it is. Look at that. Soft. Continue to work that hide. See how brittle this and kind of sounds. I like using the backs of uh, what I catch because that's the thickest part, of course for uh, mitts, little furs like this. I use them for make earmuffs, uh, wall hangers. People like this stuff in their man caves, in their dens and stuff. A uh, friend of ours, uh, Roland Weir, uh, he made a beaver Christmas tree skirt, which I thought was the coolest of cool. Working that fur, working that fur. See what that's turning? Keep breaking them fibers. That and turn ready for tan. Yeah. Let's put some tan on that. Now what you want to do right here, lay your hide out. Let's see if I can get a shot. Stay with me. What I like to do is just a little bit of solution. You don't want to put much. You can always add to, but you can't take away. Just a little bit at a time on that fur. Brush it on. That's pretty much it. God, that stuff smells good. Smells like a brand new saddle. Mm. Now, go back. Once you do this process right here, go back. Keep an eye on your furs. Don't just throw a little tan oil on there and say, so, well, it's all good. Just a little glazing is all you want. You don't want to soak that hide. I may have put too much tanning on that on that skunk. I'm thinking that I did. Just a little bit. You just want a little glazing on the back side of that. Now, if you're going to do fur off or hair off, uh, you'll probably want to tan both sides with some tanning. But like I said, you know, you don't want to go hog wild. And brush it on like you're painting. And you can smell the solution in that. I shook that bottle up before I started, by the way. That's the end of the video before I even start the video. So shake your bottle up. Let me tell you that. I want that solution there to be mixed real good. And what I'll do is I'll, all the way down the tail of that bob, and what I'll do is uh, I'll let this sit. I'll hang it and let it sit and let that oil soak into that. That's oil is all it is. Tanning solution. Uh, I'll let it sit. And uh, soak into that hide, and I'll go back and check it periodically, making sure that it's taken. It'll turn just a little bit. That's why I'm thinking that I may put a little bit too much on the old skunk here. See how brown, brown that is? <laughs> Which is fine, it didn't hurt it. But you've got a lot of oil content right there, you know. 
Man, that's pretty hot. Whew. That's pretty. Ears and owl. Nice little ears and owl. Like I said, when it comes to uh, getting the ears, and all that you can get off one, make sure if there's any cartilage, you get rid of that cartilage because it will rot. So, uh, I'm going to make some uh, mitts if I can get to it. <laughs> I mean, I'm covered up. I'm going to get some mitts. Uh, make some mitts if I can get to it. Make some earmuffs. See how it's turning out. I'll get a good shot of that. But there's a couple places out right there I'll have to. <laughs> I'll have to repair. So a lot of people go a lot of different routes when it comes to tanning. Some people just bring tan only. I don't want to deal with the solution myself. Easy in, easy out. Like I said, I've got I've got uh, hides over there. I'm gonna work that other bob up just a little better. I'm not really satisfied with the complete product of that. I'll work, I'll break them vibers down today and put some tanning on it. And I've got another coyote out there that I noticed I hung it up. And I noticed I let it dry a little too much. And uh, the coon that I have out there, don't seem like I got enough of the membrane off. When you get like that, uh, don't worry about it. All you got to do, like I said, is just put the water to it. If you've not got all the membrane off, put the water to it. Put it. In, you could even put it in baking soda solution. Okay? It's not going to hurt it. Because if you've pickled it, that hair is fastened to that hide. You can soak that in some baking soda solution, put it back on the fleshing beam, and tweak it if you left a lot of the membrane on there. Then start the process back over. You've not ruined yourself. You see what I'm saying? You've not damaged nothing. You've not hurt nothing. You can always go back once you get to this stage after you have let it dry and you fleshed it. Uh, you can go back and repeat. All you got to do is back up. You see what I'm saying? Put it in reverse. And uh, go back and wet it. If, if you're just trying to break the fibers, if you got all the membrane off, just spritz it. Let it soak a little bit and pull on it. See what I'm saying? Don't soak it. If you've not got all the membrane off of it like you'd like for it to be, like it's not suiting you, you can soak it in baking, uh, baking soda water, warm baking soda water just, just for a little bit. Wring it out, put it back on the flashing beam, and take your flashing knife back over it. Get that membrane off there because that tanning solution can't soak into that hide with that membrane on there. And it makes it real stiff, super stiff. And that's what you don't want. Now, if you're going to go with liner, like in mitts, uh, being a little stiff, a little stiff, now I'm not talking about cardboard stiff, but a little stiff, that's okay. Yeah, I like that soap, man, that's strong. Ooh, baby. But if you want to make like earmuffs, hats, uh, clutches for women, uh, items like that, maybe a throw, maybe a rug, you want to break that fiber down, you want to make sure that membrane's completely off, you want to break that fiber down super soft. Put the tan into it, let it soak. You can take a dry cloth and go over it, wiping off the excess. And like I said, take a curring brush. I've got a uh, detangling brush out there. Lightly go over that fur. Don't go after that fur like you're fighting fire. Lightly go over that fur. You don't want to stress that hide, stress that hair. But that will get any of the loose uh, hairs off the fur, I've got a little bit of loose hair on me now because it's not being curred or brushed. We, I call it curred. That's what horse people call it. I didn't cur that hair or that hide. But I'm gonna make loops, make walnut loops, and attach the hides to the loops as wall hangers. Those are real nice in a man cave, depending on the color color of the fur. But I'm going to finish this right here up. Let's 
so you can see the glaze to that. Yeah. And like I said, if you've got furs, and I'm being serious now, if you've got furs that, that need to be tanned, don't, don't, and then you're, you're not a professional, you don't, you don't sell it to professional fur buyers. If you use it for your personal use, take my advice. I learned the hard way. Go ahead and tan that hide. Because if you get the Dermistid Beetle, I believe that's how you pronounce it, the Cleopatra Beetle, once he gets into your furs, it's all over with but the crime. I lost about, I don't know, nine, ten furs, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't quite remember. It's been a couple years back. I had to fumigate my building, take everything out, spray, spray everything down. Uh, they will absolutely take over. They will take over. And another piece of advice, if you have a bobcat, coyote, anything, fox, whatever, you can't get to uh, fleshing that animal. If you're covered up, if you work, whatever the case may be, you've got multiple coyotes, you can go ahead and, and uh, skin that animal, wrap that hide up in a garbage bag and put it in the freezer. Okay, you can put it in the freezer for later fleshing. If you can flesh it and you still, uh, that's about all the time you've got is to skin it and flesh it. And you've uh, not got time for anything else. You can still yet wrap that fur up in a garbage bag, a Walmart bag, and depending on the size of the fur, and put it in the freezer. It will keep that hide. It will keep that hide. That's the whole key. Is to keep that hide. And like I said, this tanning, <clears throat> dermistid beetles, I'm not saying it's a foolproof way of uh, keeping the bugs off of your hide, but <clears throat> they don't like the tanning because the reason I know this, I had some that were tanned, some that wasn't tanned, and they were all on the same wall, stretched out. <clears throat> And the tan hides, I think I got one or two. This may be one. No, this ain't one. That one right there is the one. I believe the one I just hung up was the year before last, the, the year that I had the Dermistid beetle infestation. Uh, they didn't bother it. Didn't touch it. Didn't want nothing to do with it. I guess the oil tastes bad. But they get on these hides, they eat these hides, and they lay their eggs. They multiply, and they multiply fast. But Google it. Dermistid, Dermistid beetle, Cleopatra beetle. I about got this one all up good. It's about ready to be hung, and I'll hang it, fur down, and let it all soak. And I'm gonna break that other one down just a little better. I don't, I don't much care for the way it's, it's a feeling. I want this one because this is a beautiful bob. Work on these legs, son. They're a little see, see how brittle they are. They're tough. And I need to spritz them. Spritz them just a little bit of water. Spritz that head just a little bit of water because it's a little stiff. I believe I've got about all the membrane off of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's stretching out good now. But uh, I'm going to work on the hides today. I hope this has helped you some. So I took you through the the skinning, the fleshing, okay, the pickling, the neutralization of the baking soda and warm water, babysit you hide, which I didn't do. I did on these two, but I didn't the others. Babysit you hide. If you can pull it. If you can pull it and you see it turning white like that, work that fur. Go ahead and work that fur. Take a day and work that fur. See how that's pulling? Work that fur. Uh, if you can't and it dries hard, spritz it and then work it. But as soon as you can, as soon as you can, tan that hide. Preserve that hide. But I hope this has helped you some. I know, like I said before, I'm not a professional fur handler. 
I don't sell to professional buyers. Shoot, I don't skin good enough to sell to professional buyers. Call it like you see it. But, uh, I got enough fur, or get enough fur, just to, uh, let me show you something right here. This right here is one, one of the, I didn't mean to jump off the subject, but this right here, see it's not dry. See how it springs? It's not turning white. It's not dry right there in that corner. You can see it's real, kind of a little, little wet and tacky. It's not dry enough right there. So I need to work this fur, spread this fur out. A lot of people stretch their furs. That's fine dandy. Me, I stretch them. I stretch them on the wall and babysit them. And then I work them up. But uh, I get enough furs just to do what I do. Work up some hats, mitts, mucklucks, whatever. Uh, something for somebody to hang in their man cave. Maybe give gifts out or whatever. But I appreciate you watching. I hope this helped you. If you got any ideas, tips on uh, maybe you brain tan. I haven't yet. Uh, but if you brain tan... If you uh, bottle tan, if you've got better ideas, maybe some tricks and tips that help me out along the way to uh, better fertile handle what I've got. I, like I said, I don't professional trap. I don't have bukus of fur stuck everywhere. I've got enough to to maybe supplement a little bit of income for being out there. You know, a tank of gas is a tank of gas when it comes to being on trap line. It is what it is. Call it like you see it. But appreciate you watching. Appreciate your time. Uh, it's Roland Smith Mountain Bush Crafters Alliance. I'm going to finish this fur up. Get that baby worked out some. There's a few places that are still a little stiff before I put the tan on. I want it good and broke. You want them fibers good and broke. But go farther. Stay longer. Won't be long. I'll catch you out in the field.